Good morning. It's a huge pleasure for me to be able to introduce our speaker this morning, Mr. Julio Ricardo Varela. I've known, I've known this guy for 30 plus years, and I love him as if he were my own son. In fact, I used to want to adopt him. Uh, but in addition to that, he has some real qualifications in the world for being our, our speaker today. Mr. Varela is an award-winning journalist who focuses on Latino communities and Latino politics. He appears frequently as a columnist on MSNBC. He has recently founded a new digital media site, the Latino Newsletter. His work has been featured in the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Atlantic, the Guardian, ESPN, NBC News, Le Monde, Face the Nation, Fusion, Univision, and Telemundo, and he has made numerous national TV appearances. So this guy is a heavy hitter. Uh, in 2011, Mr. Varela founded Latino Rebels, which quickly became a top US Latino uh, digital media site. And then in 2018, Latino Rebels joined Futuro Media, uh, a Pulitzer Prize winning news organization with Mr. Varela as its president. In that role, he co-hosted many news shows, expanded the show's digital footprint, uh, and he oversaw historic gains in podcast, online, and social audiences. Uh, before his years at Futuro, Julio was a digital producer for Al Jazeera's, Al Jazeera America's The Stream. In, two, in 2015, the National Association of Hispanic Journalists honored him with its inaugural Dali Award given to an individual or company that steps up and goes above and beyond to ensure that Latinos are fairly and accurately represented. And in 2018, Inquilinos Boricos in Acción uh, named Varela one of Boston's, Boston's top Latino leaders. Uh, in addition to all these credentials, Julio is an honors graduate of Harvard and just a super good guy. So without further ado, my dear friend, Julio Ricardo Barrera. Okay, good morning, everyone. Ah, oh, come on. I know, when, I hated when people would do that to me, so I'm gonna do it again. Good morning, everyone. There we go. Uh, this, what a beautiful day, and thank you for the very warm welcome and inviting me to speak with you today. It's truly an honor to be here at the Brooks School. It's a community known for its diversity, energy, and commitment to shaping thoughtful, engaged citizens. And I wanna begin with a question for all of you as I talk, and this is the question. What does it mean to discover and share your brilliance in a way that inspires others even when the world feels uncertain? It's not an easy question to answer, but I believe the journey to understanding it begins with recognizing the light you already carry and knowing how much it can impact the world around you. Today I wanna to share my story, how I discovered my light, how I've worked to share it, and why I believe each one of you has the power to do the same. When I was your age, I didn't think I had much brilliance in my life. I didn't think I was brilliant. I grew up in Puerto Rico and the Bronx, navigating two worlds that didn't always feel like they fit together. My parents divorced when I was young, and my mom worked hard to give my siblings and me a stable life, but money was tight, and the idea of attending a school like Harvard felt impossibly out of reach. Yet in the fall of 1986, I got into Harvard, and I stepped into my first newsroom, the Harvard Crimson, and I had dreams of becoming the next great sports writer, but I was overwhelmed with doubt. I was surrounded by all these brilliant writers and journalists who now lead every media organization in the world, it feels, and people who seem defined for greatness. Meanwhile, I was just a kid from, a, from the Bronx covering Harvard hockey. 
which won the national championship in 1981, in 1989, but I could barely believe that I was there, let alone at a student newspaper that I had been publishing for over 100 years and is literally a canon in American journalism. So that doubt lingered, even as I felt like I was finding some success. Um, I landed a job at the Boston Globe in 1989 when I was 19 years old in the summer. Uh, I worked for the Boston Globe Sports Department, so if there's any Boston fans here, I assume you, some of you are, it's like, it's like playing at Carnegie Hall. Um, I still felt like I didn't belong. At 19, I was working alongside these legends, Lee Montville, um, Peter Gammons, Bud Collins with his pants. Um, people, people whose names you'd see in, in, na you know, in these national sports stories, but how did a kid like me end up there? But something kept me going. I showed up every day, met deadlines, I, con I conducted interviews in Spanish and English. Over time, I realized something important, really important. My voice mattered. Uh, the way I saw the world, shaped by my background, my culture, my experiences, brought something unique to the table. That's when I learned a powerful lesson around 20 years old. Brilliance isn't about being the smartest person in the room. It's about showing up with courage, being authentic, and doing the work. But even when you discover your brilliance, which I did, like at 20, I was like, oh, wow, I get it. Um, the world doesn't always make it easy f for your brilliance to shine. So after I graduated in 1990, I hit a wall. I couldn't find my way into a full-time newsroom job, and I started to feel like my dream of being a journalist might not come true. Like I said, I was 20, 21 years old, and my world felt small. Boston and Puerto Rico were the only places I could imagine working, but the opportunities I wanted weren't there until they were. And um, both Mr. Chapman and uh, a dear colleague of mine who they both hired me in 91, educational publishing I start at Houghton Mifflin, which if you all know is one of the most storied publishing companies in the history of American publishing. You know, the, uh, the publishing company that published Emerson and Thoreau, I was working for them. And it felt like a detour because I wanted to be a journalist, I didn't want to be a textbook editor, but the work turned out to be deeply meaningful to me. Um, I was creating Spanish language textbooks that reflected the fast growing Latino community in states like Texas, Florida, and California. And I worked on stories and lessons that represented kids like me, kids who, really, who rarely saw themselves in their school books. Over time, I advanced at Houghton Mifflin and I became the first Latino editorial director in the company's history of the Reading Language Arts Department, which I'm incredibly proud of. Sorry, my two bosses are here. My mentors are in the room. They've seen me, they've, you know, it's very special to have special people here. You know, we led efforts to bring more diversity and representation to public school curricula, and I saw how my work could make an impact, not for just one generation, but for many. And our impact still helps educate kids in 2024, things that we did in the 90s. It's just, it's incredible. But the publishing world was changing and I faced another crossroads in my career in my late 30s with two young kids. My career was in flux, so I turned back to journalism. This time it was digital journalism, it was social media. I had a Harvard email. I joined Facebook like a month after it was created. Um, I, joined, I joined Twitter when it was really cool and fun in 2006. Um, and I focused on community-driven, innovative coverage of communities that have been ignored and invisibilized. 
So that led me in 2011 to find Latino Rebels, which is a platform dedicated to amplifying stories about Latino communities and challenging stereotypes in the media. And it was a leap of faith. I was, I was like, is this gonna work? But it reminded me of another important lesson. Your brilliance isn't just about you. It's about how you use it to create space for others to shine. So that brings me to all of you. We're living in a world that right now feels uncertain, a world where divisions can sometimes overshadow hope. But here's what I know to be true. Your generation has the power to change that. You're part of the most diverse generation in the history of the world. You understand the importance of inclusion, of making sure every voice is heard, and you care about building a future where everyone has this chance to shine. Building an inclusive future doesn't happen in one big moment. It happens in the small, everyday choices you make, I make, we all make. It starts with recognizing the value in yourself and others. It means standing up for what's right, listening with empathy, and creating spaces where people feel seen and heard. Each of you has a role to play in shaping that future. So I'll leave you with this. Your brilliance is already within you. It's in the way you approach challenges, the way you support your friends, and the way you bring your unique perspective to the table. The world may not always feel ready for your light, but don't let that stop you. Discover your brilliance, share it with courage, and use it to inspire others. Thank you for letting me share a little bit of my story. I can't wait to see your brilliance and how it shapes the future. Thank you. Thank you.